Good morning. It's Wednesday, December the 2nd, the fourth day of Advent. Continuing our theme of hope for this first week, looking forward to the birth of Jesus, we want to take a quick look at Job, perhaps one of the earliest stories in the Old Testament. You'll remember that one day the sons of God are come to meet with God, and God asked Satan where he's been, and he said he's been roaming to and fro from the earth, and God says, what about Job? He's a good man. And Satan says, well, it's no wonder you've protected him. You've built a hedge around him. Everything that he does, you bless, but if you will take all of that away from him, he will curse you to your face. And God says, fine, go ahead, do whatever you want to. With whatever he has, just don't touch him. And so Satan goes out, and through a series of tragic events, Job loses all of his children, all of his flocks and herds, and everything, and he says, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. And then sometimes later, the sons of God come back together, and God again looks at Satan and mentions Job, and how he had remained faithful, and Satan says, well, no wonder you didn't let me touch him, but if you will let me touch him, he will turn and curse you to your face. And so God says, fine, you can touch him, just don't kill him. You can't kill him. And so Satan goes out and he afflicts Job with painful, very painful sores from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. And through all of that, Job didn't sin. And so he goes out and he sits down and he's scraping his sores and three of his friends show up and they sit with him in silence for about a week and then Job talks and then his three friends talk and they essentially blame Job for his condition and basically tell him that he's obviously committed some terrible sin and he is being punished for that and Job maintains his innocence. It wasn't that Job thought he was perfect. But in those days there was this idea that if you were good you would be blessed. If you were evil or sinful, you would be cursed. And Job keeps saying, I haven't done anything to deserve this kind of punishment. And they go back and forth like that several times. And in one of his speeches to his three friends, he cries out with a mixture of agony and frustration, Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and lead they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. Now we are not told how. But somehow, Job knew about a Redeemer. And not just a Redeemer, but his Redeemer. And that his Redeemer lives. And Job understood that one day, he would see God with his own eyes. Now, I don't think Job knew how that was going to come about. There's no indication at all that Job knew anything at all about God becoming flesh in the form of a little baby that would be named Jesus. But Job believed firmly and strongly that his Redeemer lives and that one day he would see God with his own eyes. So let me encourage you today, this fourth day of Advent, to think about the Redeemer. Talk to one another about what it means to be redeemed. And I pray that you'll have a great day.